In this coding exercise, we have what looks to be a pretty simple problem. We're asked to multiply two large numbers. So in our test, you can see that it's asking us to accurately multiply two large numbers. And the test data is 10 and 42 with two very large decimals after them. And the expectation is that if our large number processor takes in these two values, that it will equal this. And this is a number I worked out by myself. And this is the accurate answer if you multiply both of these. Now, if we try what is most likely what seems like the easiest implementation, you would just say num1 and you'd multiply that by num2. Now, if I save this, I'm going to, because this number is so long, I'm going to keep it here. I'm just going to use tmux to create a new window, and I'll keep the other one in the background. So I'm going to say rspec and January 8, and let's run this. And you can see that we have a failure, and the initial failure here is because there is no implicit conversion of string to integer. So that's kind of something that's a little bit interesting. Do you notice how the test values here are string values? And there's a very specific reason for that. And I'm going to first just remove these and we'll put them back in after I say why they're important. So coming here, also remove them from the answer just to be fair. So I'm going to come here and update it. So our test is now updated and is taking these decimal values or these float values here. Now if I switch over to this window and run it again, you'll see that it says our tests pass. But this is actually a very crafty and incorrect answer. And I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna walk through exactly why this is. So what we've done is we've taken these two values and we said, okay, let's just multiply these two together. But let's not take this at face value. I'm gonna copy this and paste these values over here. Now let's actually see what real value we're getting. And so I'm gonna say val1, and I'm gonna do exactly what is in our method in val2. Now let's run this code, and look at this. This is a little bit weird. Look at our answer. Our answer is 425 dot and then these numbers. If you notice, this is quite a bit less, and we're missing a large number of decimals compared to what we have here. And this is the reason why our test passed, because not only did it cut off these numbers, as you can see, by default, it cut, cut off, Ruby cut off these numbers, and it also did it on our answer. And that's the reason why our test passed, or uh, our test passed, even though technically it was the wrong answer. And this is partly to show you why it is very important to do this right, and I'm going to also show you how we can fix this. It's also the reason why I started off the guide with these values being strings. You're gonna see something kind of interesting here and why these need to be string values. And the reason is because right here, when they are decimals, and when I should say when they're floats, this is of the float data type. If I copy this code right here, and just bring it down and paste it in. If I say at the end of this uh, class, just to see what class it is, and run this code, you can see that it says it's of class float, and that is what the problem is. Our float class in Ruby is not very detailed, meaning that it does not allow you to work with these large scientific numbers. It will take it to a certain level of precision, and then it will cut it off. So, for example, and you can even see this if I just run just this code. I'm not technically running any code. I'm not running some type of conversion, but look at this. I have 10 and then all these decimal places, but look at what Ruby sees this as. 
Ruby sees it as these decimals ending at one. So it is missing a large number of characters. It comes to this point here, and then it says, okay, I'm done. I am going to just take the rest of it and round it either up or down, depending on the value. And this may not seem like a big deal to you. So let's ask the European Space Agency if this is a big deal or not. And open up the browser, and you can see right here a report, and this is a very famous report in the computer science community, and it was the explosion of the Ariane 5. This is a European Space Agency issue where it exploded. It was a rocket that cost, let's see, they have the cost somewhere here. The cargo is valued at 500 million, but the actual development of the rocket and everything associated with it was $7 billion. And do you want to know how it blew up? It was because of exactly the problem that we're talking about right now, which is it had an issue with its decimals. Let's read it right here. It says, it turned out that the cause of the failure was a software error in the inertial reference system. Specifically, a 64-bit floating point number relating to the horizontal velocity of the rocket with respect to the platform was converted to a 16-bit signed integer. This is exactly what we're talking about right here, where we had a number that we expected to be accurate with this 425 and then all of these numbers coming down, but it is not because it's actually getting converted to a float data type, which is nowhere near as precise as we needed it to be. Thankfully, there is a fix, and that's what we're gonna implement now. So first, I converted these to strings, but I also need to convert our answer to a string as well. So I'm gonna do that, and now we're dealing with strings. And the reason why is because, like you saw, Ruby, by default, simply converts any time they see a decimal, it's going to convert it into a float, and we can't have that. So we need to start off by passing this in as a string. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to requir require a new library called Big Decimal, and this is gonna provide us with a different type of way of working with large scientific type numbers. I'm going to create and call big decimal on num1, and then I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm going to say big decimal, and this will be on num2. And so everything here is, you may think that this is all we need to do, but we also need to do one type of conversion. I'm not going to do it yet though, because I want to first see exactly what we're looking at now. Let me grab these variables, paste them down here, and let's see if this is starting to work a little bit better. I'm gonna pass in value one and value two. Hit save, and let's run it. Okay, so this may not look like the right answer yet, but we are getting closer. What this creates for us, whenever we call big decimal and we multiply that by another big decimal, we get a big decimal object. And there's a lot of things that we could do with it. You can see that we could actually convert it into an array and treat it like a collection. We're not gonna have to worry about it here because all we care about is getting an accurate answer. So in order to do that, we can wrap all of this up in a set of parentheses and then call 2s, and then we're gonna pass in a special argument to 2s called f, and this is going to get not the floating point value, but it is gonna give us a pretty looking decimal value. It's gonna be a decimal value that is closer to what we would expect it to be, and it is what we're looking for down in the RSpec test. So now if I run this, 
Now you can see that we get the correct answer. So now it is no longer cutting off our values and instead it's giving us our full scientific kind of value. We also could get the scientific notation if we wanted. So if that is something that you ever need to do, you just don't provide the float as or the F as the argument. So if I hit save now and run it, you can see down here that the return value is no longer the full accurate answer. It is accurate, but it's giving it to you in scientific notation. And so it, there's not one right or wrong way to do it. This is just simply a different type of way to view the data. And if you're working in a system that would prefer to see the scientific notation, then this is the way you do it. If you want to see kind of the standard decimal way, then you do it like I had before. So let's come up here and I'm gonna put back our value and let's run our test. I think we're finally ready to do that. I'm going to switch to the different window, run it again, and as you can see, our test is passing, but now it's passing for the right reason. So there are a few reasons why I wanted to cover this in the guide. First, I think it's important because this is a very common Ruby interview question in regards to how to work with large numbers. And this is one that can be a little bit of a trick question because you may think that a float would be big enough and be able to do the processing you need. So first and foremost, that's important. But also there's a hidden reason. Notice how when we originally had our test set up and we switched all of these values to floats, the test passed, even though it shouldn't have. Tech, like in terms of the intuitive uh, behavior we're looking for, it should not have passed because we were passing the same exact number, but there was a little bit of a trick because the fact that uh, Ruby was seeing it as a float value automatically converted it to us and the test passed. But that was not the kind of test we wanted passing. It, that is the reason then uh, you may not be a rocket scientist, but this is the kind of thing that can cause $7 billion in losses. So you do not want to do this. You want to make sure that whenever you're writing tests that you are covering all the cases and that you're actually getting the right values. So a good practice is don't just trust because you came up with an answer that it is going to be the most accurate way of doing it. Make sure to implement other testing mechanisms such as manually testing values. You don't have to do that for every single test you run. That would take forever. But when it comes to very important components of the system, such as running mathematical equations, then be smart about it. Don't just simply rely on the tests themselves. Make sure that the values that are getting generated are the real ones. This could make a very significant difference when it comes to building tests and implementation for, say, a payroll engine. You wouldn't want to not pay someone the right amount just because you didn't implement the right type of data type and that you're, even though your tests are passing, the individual didn't get paid how much he should have and that's a very important thing to do. So that is why I wanted to cover it. Not just because working with large scientific numbers is important but also to show that if you just run through and quickly create your tests but don't actually test the real values themselves then you might actually be testing the incorrect data. So Great job if you went through that. Please let me know if you have any questions on that whatsoever.